Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Chiswick Coffee Break. This is actually episode number 15, and today my guest is the lovely Zoe Angle. Hello, Zoe. Hi there. <laughs> oh, thank you for joining me today. So let me tell you a little bit about Zoe. Zoe Angle is a versatile stained glass artist specializing in traditional glass painting, a technique she uses and works. She designs herself as well as when she's restoring old glass. When working with homeowners, Zoe enjoys leading them through the commissioning process, resulting in a stunning piece that has personal significance. She also works with businesses on larger scale projects, creating schemes of glass for houses. A fine art graduate, Zoe worked for the stained glass place in Chiswick before completing a four year glass painting apprenticeship at Goddard and Gibbs Studios, which is Britain's leading designer and maker of stained glass. After founding Angle Glass in 2009, She's built up her company working with homeowners, architects, interior designers and churches, as well as window and door companies. Zoe also collaborates with other stained glass artists, such as Emily Blunt, when creating a memorial window honoring Winston Church over St. Martin's Church, laid in Oxfordshire. She worked with Benjamin Finnett and Tin Conliffe on a St. Francis window for the Church of St. John the Baptist, Epping, which won a highly commended design award. Over the last 30 years, Zoe has helped restore the glass from the Baltic Exchange Dome, now displayed at the National Maritime Museum in Greenwich, produced glass for the Bat El Baraka Royal Palace in Oman, and for the Sikh Temple in Southall. She exhibited work in the centenary exhibition of the British Society of Master Glass Painters. Zoe Angle is a member of the Heritage Craft Association and the British Society of Master Glass Painters. Woo! So it's <laughs> quite an introduction, and it's amazing. I've, been, I've known you, but it was nice to read your bio and see so much more about you. So welcome. Thank you very much. We're going to start with the Chiswick side of things. So you're a Chiswick girl, I think, through and through. What does Chiswick mean to you? Well, I moved to Chiswick when I was three and I was brought up there. I went to school there. And also, as mentioned in my bio, my first stained glass job was in Chiswick. I worked for a studio just off Turner Green Terrace um, with the lovely Lou Spencer called The Stained Glass Place. And uh, we, I learned a lot and we had a lot of fun. We would used to go to Chris's when it was cold and get some chips or food, food bears for ice cream when it was nice and sunny. So, uh, yeah, and I've got family who live in Chiswick still, so I'm always there. But Chiswick is an important place for you. Yeah, very important. Yeah. Oh, good. Um, do you have any, I mean, I, I know you've done a lot of homes and a lot of projects here in Chiswick. Was there any notable Chiswick projects that you've worked on? Well, I've done a lot of work um, in Bedford Park, as you can imagine. Um, I often get called in by interior designers such as Solveig Knapstad. And how it would work is I get asked to come and look at a house that they're working on. I would assess the original stained glass and then talk about any new glass that they might need. So, um, yeah, I'd repair glass, clean glass and make any new glass to fit in with the old. So I've done quite a few houses in Bedford Park and I've just got a new one coming up as well. So oh, it's all good. Yeah. yeah, I think you're pretty well known here. I think the estate agents know you now really <laughs> get it very well, um, which, which is fantastic. Um, tell me about um, a little bit about a project, how long it takes from start to finish, if it's like a home or, you know, a door. Yeah, well, it's, it's difficult to say because of the size of the project, but I usually sort of start off by saying it'll take about six weeks sort of lead time. Um, so what would happen is I would talk to the person and see what's involved, uh, see what they need, what they'd like, and then I design something. Um, based on that, I'd give them an estimate. And then if they were happy, they would come and choose their glass. And then it's a time to get on and make it. I'd draw it up full scale. I would cut the glass, join the glass together with lead, add putty and polish it, and then I'd fit it. So, I mean, six weeks is a good guess, but it can take longer um, if the, the they approach us and they've got building works going on and I have to wait to the appropriate time to fit it. But it's, you know, and it can be a two door panels or it could be 36 windows. So that has a bearing. <laughs> <laughs> When you say they, they choose the glass, is that colour or is that when, when, what do you mean? Texture, colour. They come in and I can show them from samples and it's all to do with their personal taste, but also say if they're wanting to create privacy, texture comes into it because you can keep the place light but ha add a texture so people can't see through. So if it's a window that's overlooked or a front door that you don't want people looking down the hall, then that comes into it. 
but people have their own tastes. People have quite can have quite strong feelings about colours. So someone might go, oh, I hate yellows and I don't want yellow. Um, and also it's about you helping guide them through about which colours work well together because some people need a bit of hand help holding through the process, which is absolutely fine. So that's what it, I do. It's interesting. I mean, it makes total sense with the privacy and stuff like that. Yeah. Now, but, um, you know, somebody may, you know, it's a front door. So seeing in and things, but you don't think about it until you no. do Right. Oh, that's really interesting. Um, I mentioned a couple of notable projects that you've worked on. Um, the, the Winston Churchill one is interesting. Do you have a favourite? or? Um, well, I think the favourite ones for me, maybe not the most notable, it's more the ones that have the greatest effect on the client. And they're usually the personal ones. So uh, I've recently just fitted a window for uh, around a front door, two side panels and a top panel. And um, this actually came through Sashed, which is a company that I work with quite a lot. It's a window and door company, very high end. And basically the woman um, was Chinese and we discussed what she wanted and she's restoring the house. It was unloved and derelict and squatted and she wanted to put love back in. So her Chinese heritage informed the design. For instance, it had a lot of red, which symbolizes luck and joy and happiness. Mm. It had a lotus in it, which is rebirth, which tells the story of the house. Um, I designed with um, auspicious numbers in mind, which I'd never done before. So jobs like this, I always learn, you know. So she described it as... Um, when it was completed, she said, it's a sunny day every day in our hallway. Now as the stained glass fills the space with warm glow, the white lotus is very beautiful and sometimes looks blue from the inside too. Thank you. <laughs> so um, I think these are the ones that make a difference to me because you feel like you've connected with the person. And I've learned along the way. I was going to say, it sounds like in, in probably all jobs, there's a lot of research that goes yeah. into it. Um, and when you've done it for 30 years, it's quite nice to find out something new and put something new in. So, yeah. I mean, do you ever get anybody who just doesn't know what they want? They just Absolutely. Want they can come with an absolute shopping list of everything they want included. And I have to go, right, let's pair this back. Or some people who look like rabbits in a headlight and they just say, I need some glass, but I don't know. So it's a case of you look at designs and stained glass that already exists and, and quite often finding out what they don't like is a quick way of finding out what they do like <laughs> so but interesting interesting that's cool that's cool um do you have any any future projects you can talk about or it's something yes that's coming up? well I'm doing one which I'm very excited about um it's actually I've been invited to make a piece for an exhibition and it's um the theme of enchanted gardens and it's a festival um i'm just going to read it to get it right festival of enchantment and delight in the garden so this is an artist that i've worked with before and they're running this uh, music literature and art festival on the 10th and 11th of june and it's um, the pant hall cloister garden and yeah so it's quite good fun it's quite a wide ranging brief and it's lovely for me to experiment and do what I like because when you work to commission you often have design criteria set out at the beginning and you have to stick within them but when it's your own work you can do what you like so so that's what I'm working on and once it's been shown I can then bring it back and show it in the studio as part of Beat in September right. so the open studios so. Right, when it, do you have the dates for Beat? Yet? Yes, we are open. Our studios are opening. Um, it is on the sixteenth and the seventeenth of September between eleven and six. Mm. So. Oh, I'm going to make sure I get there this year <laughs> for sure, for sure. Right. Um, I always ask this question. It's my my favorite, but last question. Where's your favorite place in Chiswick? Well, my new favorite place is Chiswick Cinema. And there's reasons for that. Of course, it's comfortable and stylish, but also um, my sister's disabled and it's fully accessible. And so it's made a big difference with us going out socially um, because you can get to every part of the cinema, lifts, 
give you access and steps are not a problem. So that's great. And also food bears because the ice cream's fantastic. <laughs> I love it. My son loves it. We all love it. <laughs> I mean, thank, thank goodness when, when High Road House came in and food bears went out, they only went around the corner. Around, exactly. <laughs> all, all, these, all these posh um, ice cream places, which is very nice opening up, but there's nothing like food bears. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm loyal. <laughs> I've been going there since I was a little girl. So. Yeah, <laughs> you about the cinema I love it I was just there this weekend and uh yeah we went into I think it was cinema five and it had yeah. 16 seats in it oh, and it, was, right. it was like being in your in your your own you know living room in your own lounge and watch it was it was fantastic I really the seats are so comfortable they're yeah. wonderful a bit too comfortable you don't want to <laughs> it's good. Oh, thank you Zoe very much for being my guest today I really You're welcome it. You and it's nice to have you on here so um thank you very much well thank you for asking me I'm, i was delighted my pleasure my pleasure and thank you everyone for watching the cheesy coffee break and hope to see you at another episode soon <laughs>